Welcome to Real Chemistry. Today we're going to be talking about electron configurations for ions. So you might be familiar with how you write electron configurations for neutral atoms, but what about when we add or remove electrons? So below you see the electron configuration for nitrogen, 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. And what that's basically telling us is how many electrons go in each one of those types of orbitals. Now, if you're not familiar with how to write electron configurations like that, particularly using the periodic table, go ahead and check out my video, The Periodic Table Trick for Writing Electron Configurations, before you continue. Once you've done that, then I'm going to show you how we can write the electron configuration for nitrogen 3 minus. Nitrogen, but now it's an ion. It has three extra electrons. How do we do that? Well, I've broken the process down into two steps. The very first thing we do is we just write the electron configuration for the neutral species. So write the neutral electron configuration. So we're just gonna write the electron configuration for nitrogen. And then we're gonna adjust that for the ion. So writing the electron configuration for nitrogen involves going through the 1s row, the 2s row, and then into the 2p row all the way to nitrogen. So that's three boxes into the 2p row. And that means we get 1s2 from those two boxes in the 1s, 2s2 from the two boxes in the 2s, 2p3 from the three boxes and the 2p. Now what we do is we add or remove electrons for the highest n value orbital. What's the n value? Well, the n value are these guys right here. So right now we have an n value of one for that very first one, the 1s2, an n value of two for 2s2, and an n value of two for 2p3. And all we're gonna do now is decide, do I need to add electrons or remove them? And here's the thing you need to remember. If I have a negative ion, well, that means that I have excess electrons. So anytime I have a negative ion, I need to add electrons. And if anytime I have a positive ion, that means I need to remove electrons. So in this case, we have a nitrogen that's negatively three charged. That means it has three extra electrons. And all we're going to do is add three electrons. So if we look at the 2p orbital, it can hold up to six electrons. Right now it only has three. So what we're going to do is we're going to add three more electro electrons to that. So nitrogen three minus has a very similar electron configuration, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. All we've done is added three electrons because the nitrogen ion has three extra electrons. Notice that that gets us to the same electron configuration as neon. And that will often be the case. Our ions will typically have full shells of electrons, particularly those ions that are in the P or S block. The D block ions look a little different, but for ions in the S block or the P block, you typically form ions with full outer shells. And that's what gives them that extra stability. That's why nitrogen tends to form a three minus ion. So this is how you write the electron configuration. You just write the standard electron configuration for the neutral species, and then you add or remove electrons. Remember, for negatively charged species, you add electrons. For positively charged species, you're gonna remove electrons. Let's do a few more examples. So here we have sodium plus that we wanna write. So again, the first step is just to write the electron configuration for sodium. And for sodium, we pass through the 1s block, the 2s block, all the 2p block, and then one block into the 3s row. So what that looks like is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. Now, if we want to write sodium plus, do we add or remove electrons? Well, remember, for something to become positively charged, I got to take away those electrons. So that means sodium plus has lost an electron, and I'm just gonna remove an electron from the highest n value orbital. What's that in this case? Well, I have an n value of one here, an n value of two here, an n value of two there, and an n value of three there. So that's my highest n value orbital, the three S one. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of one electron because my sodium is plus one. So that gets rid of this guy. And what happens is when I write the electron configuration for sodium plus, I get one S two, 2s2, 2p6. That 3s electron's gone. We could write 3s0, but that's just a totally empty orbital. So there's actually no reason to even write that. We can just leave it as 2p6. Notice once again, it has a full p orbital. And that's again, typical for these ions. Okay, now let's do chlorine. What does that look like? Well, we write the electron configuration for neutral chlorine. 
which is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, and then we go into the 3p orbital, five spots. That gets us all the way to chlorine right here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add or remove electrons to the highest n value orbital. So since chlorine is negatively charged, that means it's gained electrons. So Cl minus is just going to have one extra electron and the highest n value orbital. Which one's the highest n value orbital? Well, here's one, two, two, three, and a three. So that 3p is where we're going to add it. The 3s can't hold any more electrons, so we can't add it there. So it's going to be added to the 3p. And we just go 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. And that is the negatively charged chloride ion. All right, one more example. And this one shows a little bit of a trickier uh, problem. We want to write the electron configuration for vandium. Vandium 2 plus to be specific. So first, let's start out just as we usually do by writing the electron configuration for our, a neutral vandium. And we're going to go through 1s, 2s, all the 2p, 3s, all the 3p, 4s, and then three electrons into the 3d. And so what that means is our electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, and then we go into the 3s row, and then the 3p row, and that one's all the way full. Finally, to the 4s2, and then into 3d, and there's just three electrons in that 3d. Now, if you weren't really thinking about it, and we go to write vandium 2 plus, you'd say, okay, well, we need to remove two electrons. And we just look at the end of the string of numbers and you say, okay, well, let's take them from the D. That would be wrong. Now, the D block is a little weird because the D has an N value of three, yet we write it after the 4S. It turns out that the 4S and the 3D are very close in energy. And so what actually happens here is we still just follow our rule and remove it from the highest N value orbital. And that's the 4S orbital, not the 3D orbital. So we actually get rid of the electrons in the 4s. And the 3d stays around. And that looks a little funny because it doesn't follow our standard filling order. But that's okay. We just always remove them from the highest n value orbital, which in this case is the 4s orbital. And we have to remove two electrons because it's vandium 2 plus. And that means we're going to get 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, and now we could write 4s0, but then it would just be a placeholder. There's no electrons there, so we just write 3d3. So that may look a little funny because there's no 4s, but that's actually following the correct rules for removing these electrons. When you remove the electrons, you take them from the outermost electrons. And recall that those 4s electrons would be the valence electrons, and that's why those go first. So the correct electron configuration for vandium 2 plus has no 4s electrons. So thanks for watching this episode of Real Chemistry. Please let me know below if you have any questions. As always, subscribe to receive updates about future Real Chemistry episodes.